Good evening and welcome. We are live on the internet here from East Side Lutheran Church, and that means it must be Tuesday night as we get together and are gathering as we do week by week as we get ready to jump in and have a little bit of conversation. I would like to share something with you first. Fireworks on it. Yes, that was, of course, James Taylor in concert um, singing as he does, but the fireworks um, seemed oh so appropriate for this week as we are leading up to the 4th of July. My name is Lane Nelson, and it is good to be with you for Together in Faith. As we come together, talk about our own faith stories, we learn about the faiths of others, that together we might grow into the people God is calling each of us to be. You will see that here um, on our little descriptor, it says, Together in Faith, the Cost of Freedom. Last week, we were talking about generosity, but this week... Um, seemingly appropriate with the 4th of July coming up on Sunday, thought we would talk a little bit about freedom and what it is, and also what does it mean for us as we go about our daily lives. But as I do that, I would like to invite you all to participate in the conversation, to chime in and say hello if you are out there on this gorgeous Tuesday night. Tuesday nights continue to prove to be beautiful weather. So whether you are watching this live with me or whether you are watching it a little bit later, we are thrilled to have you as a part of this conversation. I know that Judy Arizona will be watching this on a little bit of tape delay because I can see her out my window as we are having conversation as she is dropping some things off here at the church. So hello to Judy. But also a big hello, Colin and Harriet. Oh my goodness, nice to have you guys here. Also a big hello and good evening to Carol and to Marlis and to Colleen. Happy 4th of July Independence Week to all of you as we are gathered here. Hopefully, again, you enjoyed that little bit of video fireworks from James Taylor a moment ago. We are also in the midst here at Eastside of having our Food to You giveaway. We work with um, Todd Smith, who is the director of the Food to You program, part of Karis Ministries here in Sioux Falls. And once a week, they do a food distribution, and it rotates between four different churches in Sioux Falls, and we are one of them. Normally, it's on the first Thursday of the month here at Eastside, but because of the um, holiday weekend coming up, they bumped it up a couple of days. So if you hear a little racket off in the background, it's just people who are coming through um, and getting food, and there's all kinds of volunteers out in the other room helping to make that happen. So God's a blessing to all of those people who are a part of that program. Again, um, I'm going to throw up a, a question for you. How are you celebrating your 4th of July? Do you have any traditions? Do you have any customs that you do? Are you a fireworks family or a non-fireworks family? In my own household, we tend to be a little bit of a fireworks family. We don't go out and put on shows that will rival things that happen at the fairgrounds, but we do like to have a little fun and, and shoot some off. This year, as we were purchasing our fireworks, they threw in some freebie extras at the end, and so we are kind of testing those out ahead of time, just the little ones, as we kind of let the anticipation build. But in my family, we have a custom of going to my wife's sister's cabin. And in fact, her whole family gets together for this 4th of July weekend. So if any of you are out there um, watching or participating in this conversation tonight from Jennifer's family, I will see you all this weekend. Um, it's a fun tradition to kind of get folks together. So if you have a tradition, feel free to throw that up and, and share that with other people as well. All right, on to this topic at hand as we think a little bit about freedom. And so I wanted to get a definition of what that was because I think if you were to ask people, what is freedom? 
we could all come up with a, a fairly decent definition, but it would be nuanced a little bit by our by our own priorities, if you will. So the online dictionary of Merriam-Webster tells us that freedom is the absence of necessity, coercion, or constraint in choice or action. That's a mouthful of a definition, to be sure. Maybe another way of thinking it is one is not forced to act or behave a certain way or one is free to make one's own choices, be they good choices or bad choices. You can build yourself up or tear yourself down. It's up to you. Those are some of the things that we have when we think of as freedom. But I'm sure depending on what you have gone through in your life, depending on how old you are, depending on what world experiences that you may have encountered, freedom for you will be nuanced um, some as well. So we ask the question, how do you experience freedom? For some of us, the first thing we think of um, as Americans, or at least one of them, is my own personal individual freedoms, which are, are certainly important. We think of the things that are built right into our Constitution, like freedom of speech, or the amendments, I should say. Um, we think of freedom of movement. We are free to kind of go around and travel and, and do the things that, that we would like to do. We experience freedom like that in America. Our, our country itself it was founded on that idea of freedom in regards to our religious beliefs. We didn't want governments telling us what we could and could not believe, and so we jumped on ships and took a risk and wound up over here. Also, our own occupations. Nobody is forcing us to um, do certain tasks as far as how we will go about making a living. There are, are so many ways in which we experience freedom. Um, a quick shout out also. I see we have more people who are joining the conversation tonight. Hello to Teresa. Oh, wonderful to have you here, Teresa. Also to Susan. Nice to see you. And to Rini. Um, Good evening to you as well. Um, warm but not horrible in North Dakota. Well, that's, that's a good concept. Anytime it's not snowing in North Dakota is a wonderful thing. Thank you all for joining that conversation. Also, hello to Irene. Um, I didn't get a chance to get down and greet the St. Arbucks folks today. I was busy in the office, but um, hope you had a good meeting down there. Nice to see you online. And Ray... Good evening to all. If you were in church on Sunday or if you participated in line, you heard Ray Scott give an um, amazing church council update. He really did a nice job informing the congregation of life going on. But looking again at how we experience freedom and why is freedom important to us? Well, of course, these are some obvious answers. It allows us really to be the person that God created us to be. <clears throat> to, to be able to use our own unique gifts and traits um, as, we, as we are able, as we see fit. Um, the downside is, I suppose, it also gives us the freedom to not use them or to let them go to waste. It, it gives us the freedom to, to build up and care for our bodies or the freedom to do things that are harmful to them and, and let them go to waste. The problem is sometimes when, when freedoms like that are abused, they then put a cost on somebody else. And an example like that with our own bodies, if, if I don't care for myself and my health and then I get sick, somebody else ultimately ends up then bearing the cost of my freedom of choice of not taking care of myself. And so our, our freedoms are really more than just our individual freedoms. Because as much as we want to be individual people and kind of our own um, self-made man, as they say, or into, you know, manifest destiny as a mindset, everything we do as community affects other people. So freedoms become more than simply about me and my choices. But still, we pride ourselves, as, as, as Americans in particular, of our freedoms and, and of not having somebody else then tell us what to do. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. 
But freedom does get a little bit tricky. It, it gets a little dangerous even if, if we begin to think, well, I'm going to do as I blank well please and nobody is going to tell me what to do. Somehow then this freedom becomes more self-centeredness. This freedom becomes almost selfishness in a way. So freedom can be a really tricky piece. Um, freedom can be something that really bears with it responsibility. Because when we ask the question, how did you gain your freedom? Well, it usually came at a cost. There's the popular song that tells us, freedom isn't free. And usually, the price for that freedom was paid by somebody else. Freedom isn't free. It comes at a cost. It brings with it a sense of responsibility. And we usually only have it in the first place because of something that somebody else has done for us. And we then become the beneficiaries of that. And so to all of those who have brought freedom to others, <clears throat> pardon me, we say a very big thank you. A thank you to all of those who have um, sacrificed and, and given their lives for the freedom of others, especially again as we think about this 4th of July holiday coming up and, and all of the countless people who, who have sacrificed immeasurably and given even in many, many circumstances their own lives um, for freedom, we say a big thank you. So these kinds of things we think about as national freedom and as we talked about as some individual kinds of freedom. But what does it mean for us to think about the phrase, the freedom of a Christian? What is that, the, the freedom of a Christian? And how does it tie in maybe to religious beliefs that we were talking about earlier, the freedom to believe what we want? Well, <clears throat> freedom of a Christian is, is several things, but one, of course, it is the title of a book written by Martin Luther. And I'm guessing many of you have, have read that or at least studied that if you've thought at all about theology. Chances are, if you come from a Lutheran background, you've at least heard of that. But it's more than just a book. It, it's really a, a, a mindset. It's an approach to what we believe. It, it's a theology of sorts. And the book itself was, was written by Martin Luther, a treatise, I suppose. I don't know what you want to call it exactly. But it was written um, a long time ago in the year 1520, as Luther was thinking and, and studying about um, what does it mean for us to be a free people? Um, and what does it mean for us to be Christians and to have the responsibility of freedom? And so to think through that, he draws on several Bible passages and just sharing a couple of them for you right here. Or this is actually, I guess, um, the kind of the, the summarizing quote of the book. A Christian is perfectly free, Lord of all, subject to none. A Christian is perfectly dutiful, servant of all, subject to all. So there's the two sides of the same coin here. Again, this is kind of the, the summary, if you will, of his book. A Christian is a perfectly free, Lord of all, subject to none. We are, are freed from the laws that, that bind us, even in Scripture, because of what Christ has done. We are, we are so free, subject to none, simply because of what Christ has done for us. But at the same time, a Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject to all. We bear that responsibility to all people. And we hear these examples, especially from, from the Apostle Paul. And Luther draws on these passages from 1 Corinthians 9. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all. Why would he say that? Why would he do that? And, and, and Paul says that in, in more than one way on more than one occasion, that he kind of becomes all things for all people. And though no one can hold over him or be a better upright Christian than him, he subjects himself to all for their good. We hear another verse from Romans. Owe nothing to anyone 
except to love another. What might that look like to owe love to another person? What might it mean to owe love to our neighbor? And then we hear again from Ephesians 4, Rather, let them work honestly and labor with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Now, that's not what most of us have in mind when we think about work and when we think about saving and when we think about um, doing things with our hands so that we can get all of this stuff so that we can share with the needy. Too often, I think our tendency as, as humans is to, to not be afraid to work per se, but, but to do so for ourselves and to, to do so so that we have, um, so that we don't worry about being without. But, but Scripture very often speaks about doing these things and having enough, not for ourselves, because God will take care of us. And this, and this is some stuff that we kind of talked about a week ago when we were looking at generosity. To do these things so that we can then provide for other people. And that can be a big pill to swallow, I think. To, to work and to gather and to save so that we can then help other people in need. The more that I'm able to save, the more I'm able to help other people is not always where our mind first goes. All right, so a little reading, a little reading from Martin Luther's The Freedom of a Christian. I'm going to share with you here um, a passage that Pastor Joel had selected and read with our confirmation students earlier this year, back this spring. And it comes from The Freedom of a Christian, and this is the annotated version by Wengert. <clears throat> For under these circumstances, it is also Christian to care for the body. At times when the body is healthy and fit, we can work and save money and thereby can protect and support those who are in need. In this way, the stronger members may serve the weaker, and we may be sons and daughters of God. One person caring and working for another, bearing one another's burdens, and so fulfilling the law of Christ. Look here, this is truly the Christian life. Here truly, faith is effective through love. That is, with joy and love, faith reveals itself in work of freest servitude, as one person abundantly filled with the completeness and richness of his or her own faith, serves another freely and willingly. That's what we have in mind as we think about this freedom of a Christian. That we are, are freed not to, to worry about and, and protect ourselves, but so that we might be freed in order to care for and provide for those who are in need. Kind of like what we've got going on tonight with this Food to You program where people are, are freely giving and caring for those who are in need at this particular time, those who have enough, those who are fit, so to speak, those who are stronger, serving those who are, are weaker or without or in need. But how does that also then just stretch and flow throughout our lives? I heard a... <laughs> a member of our congregation say something just this week to me that almost put me on, on my heels. And it's right along these same thoughts that we've been hearing Luther. In fact, this, this member kind of, in their own way, summed up Luther's theology on, on the freedom of a Christian when they said, I find ways to do with less and to save money so that there's money for me to give away. And that wasn't just a, a platitude by this person. They weren't just saying it to, to sound good. It was how this person goes about life, finding ways to, to do without or to do less in order that what they do have can be freely shared with others. And I thought that was just profound. Um, that's 
the, the freedom of a Christian. <clears throat> Perfectly free, servant to none. Perfectly free, dutiful servant to all. Subject to none, servant to all. So how do we see our Christian responsibility to other people? If we were to wrestle with that own question in our own context, how would we answer? How would you answer? What is your responsibility to other people, to people that you know as well as people that you don't know? And do we have a, a responsibility even to people who we feel are unworthy of our service? Sometimes it's, it's easier to serve some people than others because you can see that there is a, a real need and, and somehow doing something for them helps us feel good. But there are other people it's like, I'm not going to lift a finger up for them because they don't deserve my help the way they treat myself or others or by what they do or don't do or how they care for themselves. Do we still have a Christian responsibility even to those people? Probably. Probably. As Christians, we're freed to share what we have and who we are with others. Not just, again, about the what we have, but the who we are. To, to give of ourselves for the building up of other people. Because we ask, how did we gain our Christian freedom? Well, just like the freedom that we have in this country as, as Americans was provided by people who gave their lives in order that we might have those freedoms, our freedom of a Christian, as well as our own salvation, that price was paid for by someone else's well. It wasn't something that we did, but we have a God who loves us so much that they paid that price. As a person who now has a family member in the military, you can't help but sometimes think and ask that question, why do soldiers willingly give up their lives? Part of it is a sense of duty and calling. It kind of goes with the territory. But I think part of it is also a, a responsibility that, that people in that position bear and feel deeply for their neighbors and, and for fellow citizens of this country. Done certainly out of a sense of honor, but I think ultimately underneath all of it, there's that sense of, of love, of willingly laying down one's life for another is a freedom like no other. So it's important for us to be willing to sit and wrestle with these questions about what does freedom mean to us as, a, as citizens, but also as Christians, and together combined as Christian citizens. How can we ensure that Christian freedom is given to other people? Kind of comes down to the way we go about our own life, our own theology, our own understanding of our freedom as a Christian. So that's just a, a, a lot of kind of roaming around this concept that will certainly be thrown about in the media a great deal, I'm sure, in these next few days as we approach the 4th of July. So I invite you, as we get close to the 4th of July, as you're sitting in a lawn chair watching fireworks somewhere or having a picnic or, or just out with family or friends, as, as a free American and as a free Christian, ask, how am I free to be a servant to my neighbor? And what does that look like in my own very unique context of what my life is like? Hello, I see that Judy did make it back out of her car and away from the church. So thank you very much for, for the errand that you were running. Nice to see that you are there. And thank you again to everybody for being a part of these conversations on Tuesday nights, for thinking um, along with me. Feel free to, again, continue to, to put your own thoughts up in the comments so that other people can share in them as well. And may God bless you all and keep you safe this weekend. May your um, 4th of July be a, a safe one for fireworks, but also for travel. And God bless all those who will be working this weekend on behalf of and for the good and safety of others. So let us close as we do. We close with Luther's evening prayer. I give thanks to you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, 
that you have graciously protected me today, and I ask you to forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously protect me tonight. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me, so that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. Happy Fourth of July!